Okay, hello there, I'm Dennis. And just like the title of this video implies, I'm going to show you some graphical ways to burn an ISO or an image file to a USB. What brought me to this subject was I was thinking back when I was making the transition from Windows to Linux and had decided to make Linux my operating system of choice. One of the things was I, I was having to download using my Windows machine. Then I was burning the ISO either to a USB using Etcher or Rufus, and or I was using, I forget what the get what it was called, but I was putting it also on CDs and DVDs. I realized that those that, that was one of the hurdles. When I if a guy's coming over and he's thinking about making Linux or even wants to discover or explore Linux, he's gonna have to know how to burn an ISO to a USB or a CD. And I think the ISO or the USB is clearly the winner there on which one gets burnt the most. And so I thought I'd do this video and explain some of these. And I have found at least 10 just simply right through the AUR. And if you want to just peruse through what they have, you can find a lot of them listed just by typing in hyphen or image space writer. And hit enter and make it speak. So you can see just using that one, those two words, image writer, you can get like there's four or five of these that I'm going to show you here. If you know the name, you can just type the name in, like Etcher. And it should reveal that we got Bellina Etcher, Bellina hyphen Etcher, and then we also got Etcher Ben. And like I said, this is the AUR. All these packages are available in the AUR. And if you're still not comfortable using a command line to burn a ISO to a USB, then you're wanting something graphical. I'm hoping here that I'll find one that you want to use, make it a little easier. The first one on my list is Etcher. Let me bring that up. They offer two versions of this in Windows, a portable version, which is just a, the inst uh, not installer, just the app without an installer. One of the things I really like about Balina Etcher is a new thing here. It says flash from URL. So let me show you how that works real quick. We'll make this larger here. And I'm going to go straight to, see what, take me to, yeah, there we go. If I go down here or over here to the download page on the Arch Linux webpage, and instead of selecting a torrent file, just use this and go down near the bottom. And for me, I live in the United States, so just Pick whatever mirror you have. At this point, you can see that here's the link to the ISO using that mirror, and you can right click on that and say copy link location, I believe. And then here, click on flash from a URL, put your mouse in there, control V, and you can see there is the URL or the path to there, and say OK. See, in theory, you don't have to download it because it's going to do it, do it for you. Then you would select your target, and I don't even have a USB plugged in. Let me do that. I'm going to close this out. I have a USB here. It's only a 2.0 drive, and it's 8 gigabytes, but the principle will work no matter what, as long as it's large enough. <laughs> All right, so you can see there it is, 8.1 gigs, and it's not... Not anything on it. Let me bring up at you real quick. Repeat that process. Here, I'm going to right click, say, copy link, flash from URL, left click in there, control V, say OK. And your next step would be to select the target, and it should have picked that up. There's the G disk that I just put in, 8.5 gigs. Say select. And you hit flash, and it's going to ask you for your password. Boom, it's done. Now, I don't have enough time to burn all these 10 different ISOs. So we're just going to say, I did it. Click flash. We can go back, flash it from a file. In my case, there are files in the downloads folder. And I just say open. The same process. Hit flash. 
type in your password and boom, you've got it. Let me close this out. The next one is a real surprise to me and a pleasure to use. It's the SUSE Studio Image Writer. It's so simple to use. You just It says drag your disk image here. So if it was open, I could just drag it here. Or I can click there and navigate to find it and look in my downloads folder and say open. And boom, it's there. It's already picked up the U-Disk or the USB drive. And if I click right, it's going to tell me it has to be unmounted. It's going to warn me that it's going to destroy all the information. And I'm going to say yes. Then it's going to burn the ISO to the USB drive. So that's how you burn it with SUSE Studio Image Writer. All right. Next one on the list. A fairly nice one here called Mint Stick. It comes with a stick formatter and the USB Image Writer. The USB formatter does exactly what it says. You select the format, which is the disk. Then you can label it and name it anything you want to. Here, it's by default, it's going to want to do it to a FAT32. Or you could change that to EXT4, NTFS, XFAT, or leave it as default. Now, if I click format, it's going to wipe it out. Format it to a FAT32. That's mint stick. The writer looks almost identical write the image here you click on that little up arrow navigate to your downloads folder left click on whatever iso it is and say open now you would pick your drive and in this case there's only one that it recognizes for this purpose and if i click right it would ask me for my password and write the disk just that simple very good now the next one <laughs> fedora media writer here's another surprise it's actually a very nice image burner. Now, I was surprised here because you get all these selections. You get, uh, it'll reach out and burn it from the URL here as well. The Fedora Workstation 33 with some more options. Server, custom image, or you can say more and it'll show you all the other uh, spins that you can put on a USB straight from the image writer. But most of the time, if you're using this, you're going to say custom image, click on that, and then you'll find it again. Say open once I found it. Now, it did already find the USB drive, and it's going to tell me that if I write to disk, it'll warn me that it's going to erase it, and then I'll have to give it my password, and it'll burn it to disk. So boom, again, just like that. <laughs> Very easy. All right, cancel that out. That's the Fedora Media Writer USB Imager. That's found over here as well. Find this USB Imager. These are all very nice, and they all have their own simple little ways of doing the same thing. Here, it's asking you, basically, you're going to put the ISO here, and here, click on these three dots, navigate to wherever your folder is, Say open. All right. And then from the read, it's going to only read in the SDB, which is our USB drive. And it also has the option to verify once it's written. It selected one megabyte, but I'm going to change that to a four megabyte because I think that's more of a standard uh, option. Now, now, that's an option there that you need to be wary of. And I'll explain that a little later on here, what this stands for. That's the USB Imager. You can find that right here. Command is Y, capital S, USB Imager. That's simple. The next one in the list is the USB Maker. Open this up. USB Maker. This one requires you to do your password up front, which I love. It's correctly selected the USB maker or the USB drive. <laughs> Master boot record. FAT32. Default cluster size. That's probably going to be 4 megs. And you can name it as well here. Then you're going to go down here to where it says ISO image. And you're going to click on the three little dots. Navigate to wherever your ISO is located. So open. And that's it. Click start and you're gone. You've already entered your passwords. You don't have to do it again. 
Okay, this is the USB maker. Now, tell me what that looked like. I'm going to bring that up again because it. <laughs> if you in Windows and you burned any ISOs, surely you recognize this layout here. <laughs> anyway, next one in the list that was USB Maker, the Nix Rider. Nix Rider. This one's fairly nice as well. Source file, first option there. We're going to navigate to the downloads folder for me, but wherever yours is. Then it's only going to pick up the one disk, and then you click right. Just how simple is that? Like I said, every one of these is just extremely simple to use. And they're smart enough to pick up your USB drive to turn from another hard drive. Now, if you have more than one USB drive plugged in, obviously, you're going to have to select and make sure that that's right. And that's it. That's the Nix Rider. All right. Nix Rider. Next one is the ISO Image Writer, all one word. Here's another surprise. This is the KDE ISO Image Maker. And if we write this ISO the path, click on there, navigate to my downloads folder. You navigate to where yours is. They open. Now, could not find the Arts Linux signature. Please download the PGP signature file to same directory. It's going to compare that ISO to the GPG file, verify it for you. If you haven't done that, it'll do it for you, provided you download the file so that it can verify. And that's it. Click Create. It'll ask you for a password. It's over. <laughs> KDE ISO Image Maker. The guys that use Plasma are probably real familiar with this one. Okay, so the next one in line is Unibootin. Let me bring that up. Unibootin. It's going to require you for a password to start with, which I like a lot better for some reason. Here you could say a distribution. And if one of these is the one you're looking for, you could click on it. I'm assuming that it will download the URL and burn it to a disk, just like the other one did. But I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to select disk image because I have the ISO. I'm going to left click on this thing over here. Go to my computer. Go to home. Find me. Go to my downloads because that's where it's at. And left click on the ISO. And say open. And there it is. Next step, it's got a USB. It's already selected US, uh, SDB, which in this case is the USB. Okay, that's it. We're ready to... You could. Say OK, and it would ask you, it would go to writing. All right. Unibootin. Now, this last one is not going to show up in your menu. And I feel pretty certain there's a way to make it show up in my menu. If I just go command line, Rosa, Python, it's the image writer, right? image writer, and I hit enter, it's going to tell me that I have to run it with sudo. Let me do that again. Copy that. Control Alt T will bring me up that terminal. And control Shift V. Say sudo. Hit enter. And there we go. Which is kind of neat because it doesn't, I mean, you don't have to do your password again. You have to have that already done. And it's the same thing as just doing your password to start with. The first option here says select my image and click left click on that folder. Again, go to my computer, go to home, me. It's lo located in downloads. Say, well, left click on that and say open. It's already selected the USB correctly. All you have to do is click right and boom, it's there. Okay. That's it for the graphical installers or graphical ISO burners, whatever you want to call them. Now the next one is the command line, which is the dreaded DD command that everybody seems to fear. Double destruction, it stands for all kinds of things. We're going to do this pseudo command, and as you can see, we're going to need the path. This stands for DD. BS stands for block size, which is going to be, in this case, 4 megabytes. 
the input file now is going to be, and we have to type the path in. So how do you find that path? Well, just bring up your trusty old file browser. Got larger so we can find it. I uh, opened up my file browser. I'm going to go to my downloads folder, and at the very top, you'll see the address or the path. Let's get this over here, and we're going to say sudo because we need sudo rights. We're going to use dd space bs equals four capital M for megabytes. The input file is equal to slash right here we got home dentist downloads home dentist capital download downloads there we go i hit an a and then the tab and it auto completed so there's our path or the directory our file is in so our input file is in home slash dentist slash downloads with the capital d and it's Arch Linux ISO. Next we need is an output file. We got output file equals device SDB in this case. Now here's how you check that. Let me bring another terminal up. Really should have done this first, I guess. A couple different ways you can find it. Most simple is LSBLK, list block devices. Here is SDB. This stuff here is all my hard drive. Make sure that that this is your USB drive. In this case, it's SDB, and yours could be SME or lots of different things nowadays, depending on what kind of hard drive you got. Or you can run, let's see, F disk space hyphen L, and you'll get the same readout. Here is, or not the same, but a different readout telling us a lot of the same stuff. Up here is SDA, but SDB is listed here as 7.5 gigabytes, etc., etc. Even gives you the model, disk model. The disk label is DOS. Okay, that's how you find by command. That's how you find, make sure you've got the right output file, the device SDB. All right, so if I press enter right now, it will write that file to the disk. I don't want to do that because of this demonstration, but let's let's talk about what these this does here. So sudo, because I I needed a write to a block device and I needed super user permissions to do it. All right, the DD, like I said, I think the original or what it really stands for is data dupe, but people know it as data destroyer or lots of other euphemisms I've heard. Just doesn't matter. Be very careful using DD. I like to call it double destructor. <laughs> the next thing is our block size file. Why does this matter? This tells data dupe how to bulk up the operation. If you set the BS to 1K, it would mean read up to 1,000 bytes of data from input file and then write 1,000 bytes of data to the output file. In this case, we are saying four megabytes. So each section will be four megabyte size. We saw that in one of the graphicals a while ago where we had a chance to change that. That completes that. The input file, we just went through that. It's located equals. It's located in home, Dennis downloads, Arch Linux 32. Yours may be different. Yours probably will be different. Just make sure your path and the ISO are listed here. Next one is OF, which is output file. Where are we writing to? The block device. I forgot the sync command <laughs> here. So we go space and and F Y N C sync. Plain Y here, right here. We're going to do the sync because this is an operation to tell the kernel to flush all disk buffers to disk. Even if we specify block size in DD, the kernel has a disk cache and buffers to maximize efficiency. For example, if I was working on a file on a JFFS2 file system and did a small change, that change would not be written to the disk. When I force a reboot on the system, simulated crash, the changes are missing even though I saved the file and checked. 
This is because it was stored in the kernel's disk cache and not physically to disk because my changes were smaller than the block size of the NAND. N-A-N-D. It was waiting for more changes to fill up the buffer before writing to the physical disk. When I execute a sync before the crash, the file would have been updated. Uh, hopefully you understood that. So now we know how to write a disk, write a USB using 10 different graphical user interface software pro programs to do so. Now we know how to do it with DD. Okay, so now you've burned the ISO onto your USB. You've booted up to it. You've installed your system. You're happy with it, and you decide to keep it. But you have a USB that other than booting up to it is useless. So you want to know, that, well, I want to wipe it out and start using it for saving pictures or what have you on it. Music, data, period. How do you do that? You can't do it on that ISO as long as that's there. So we're going to wipe that out. Right now, since we have the use of Mint Stick, we could use their USB stick formatter. Select our disk, which is right there, a USB, and click Format. It'll ask you for a password, and it'll format it. In this case, it defaults to FAT32, which is what we would use normally anyway. But I'm going to say Cancel that out. Now, it says we've we got to unmount this thing, so let's find out where it's mounted first. And we can see here it's SDB, identifying it. It's mounted on Run Media Dentist. Let me clear that screen. So we're going to U mount, oop, sudo. We're going to sudo U mount what? Device SDB. Hit enter. And now if we run LSBLK, it won't even show up as being mounted. Right there, it was mounted, now it's not. So we know that's good. Now we're going to clear it. Now we're going to say sudo make fs or mkfs period. Now this could be a fat base hyphen capital F32 on slash device sdb. And then we're going to give it an argument of a hyphen capital I. This will format it to, we specified that we wanted a FAT32. The difference here in my example is a VFAT is a virtual FAT. This will actually put a FAT32 on there. We're going to say OK. Now it's wiping that hard drive out. It actually should unmount it, and it should mount it again. And there it is. If we open that up, it actually will open up for me. Put that out. Well, it might not now that I've double clicked on it. I'm going to open it up, and there it is. You can see there's absolutely nothing on that. And that's how you format one. Now, when I run this command, it did not have to be a FAT32. As you saw in the graphical USB stick formatter, we could have used either one of these and the countless other types. We didn't have to use FAT32. In fact, why don't we up arrow. Oops. Up arrow that U mount command back. U mount. Okay. Let's find out if it's listed as being mounted. And here it is, and it's not mounted. So clear that screen. Now we're going to say sudo mkfs.ext4. That's going to be on slash device sdb. There we go. Now if we say df hyphen p8 we should see sdb oh it's not mounted let's see okay didn't mount it no it did not mount it here's another way to do that go disk this is gnome disk utility highlight it there say mount it or we could have done it by mounting it here all right, so now if I clear the screen and run LSBLK, it should be mounted, and it is. So BLKID slash device slash SDB, and that reveals that the file system here is now at EXT4. So let me copy this. Oh, I got to unmount it first. Got to unmount. 
pseudo pseudo unmount right now we run lsdlk it should be there but not mounted and it is now we can just copy this back in here copy paste let's see not an x but a b we're not going to make a b fat we're going to make a fat space hyphen f capital f32 hit enter and now it's redoing it to a fat 32 and there we go find that command oops there it is block id we see that we have a v fat fat 32 system so that's it that's 11 ways to write a iso image to a usb thanks so much for watching i enjoyed this video there's a lot of us usb writers out there <laughs> but oh one more thing one more thing you've decided that your usb or whatever drive is virtually useless and you want to wipe it out or you're going to give it away to somebody we could bring up that terminal again run this command again using the dd all right so it would be i need to probably preface this with sudo pretty sure i would here would be the command sudo dd double destruction <laughs> double dupe the input file device zero output file is device sdb and that'll write zeros to whatever in this case it would be that usb drive it could be any other drive it could be your hard drive be careful make sure that this output file is listed correctly we'll close that out before i make a mistake <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I had a good time making this video. Peace out. Be good to each other.